welcome back my dear students i am going to discuss on the topic accessory respiratory organs of the fish fishes are the primarily aquatic and possesses gill for bankel mode of respiration however in many fishes either due to poorly developed bankel respiration or due to environmental pressure additional respiratory structure have been developed such extra bankel organs that supplement gills in respiration are collectively referred to as accessory respiratory organ the development of accessory respiratory organ is found mostly in freshwater fishes of tropical region and very rarely in marine fishes several reasons have been suggested for the existence of the accessory respiratory organ to meet the oxygen uh, deficiency to compensate the degenerate uh, gills to maintain life during estivation period to counterbalance the internal oxygen deficiency production of much carbon dioxide in water by their flora fauna and fishes themselves also as well causing formation of carbonic acid and aquatic toxicant air breathing uh, may be obligatory in some fishes to overcome these adverse situations several types of accessory respiratory organs functionable in aquatic or aerial environment that have been evolved in fishes the development of such structure is essentially adaptive in nature some accessory organs serve aquatic respiration while others for aerial respiration the accessory respiratory organ of fishes such as external gills found in dipnoan larvae integument that is found in amphibna scutia anguilla periaphthalma oral papillae found in electrophorus pharyngeal epithelium found in monopteras intestine presence in lepidocephalitis gantia labyrinthine organ found in anabastes studenius and trigoaster opercular chamber found in periophthalmus opercular lung found in claris spectacus heteroponestes fossilis anabastes studenius and trichogaster ear bladder also serves as accessory respiratory organ in case of notopteras polypteras amia and lepidosiren and pharyngeal lung that is found in channa and amphibnus so first one skin serves as a accessory respiratory organ in anguilla anguilla amphibnus cuchia and master simplus tancalus the skin is highly vascular and serves for gaseous exchange they live in oxygen deficient stagnant water and migrate one place to another through dampy vegetation during this period the moist skin which is richly supplied with blood that serves as an important organ for respiration buccopharyngeal epithelium that also serves as a accessory respiratory organ in amphibnus boliophthalmus and periophthalmus the buccopharyngeal epithelium is supplied by large number of capillaries that forms vascular network which work as efficient respiratory site muddy skipper that leave water and spend most of the time skipping or walking about their damp area particularly around the roots of the mangrove tree fresh air is gulp into the cavity and exchange of respiratory gases occur through the epithelium next uh, pharyngeal diverticulum in case of the channa species the suprabranchial cavity are developed in the roof of the pharynx the suprabranchial cavity that possesses some alveoli like structure the first gill arch appears to have greatly flattened and covered with thin vascular respiratory membrane which becomes highly folded and studded with large number of the papillae or nodules that forming labyrinthine organ or dendritic organ the respiratory surface extends anteriorly to the roof of the buccal cavity and the surface of the tongue the suprabranchial chamber and entire buccopharyngeal cavity that serves for aerial respiration and filled with air during this process in amphibnus cuchia the air breathing organs are in the form of a pair of sacs that located on lateral sides of the head these are diverticuli of the pharynx and are lined with vascular epithelium thrown into folds or ridges this sac is provided with an inhalant and exhalant aperture the respiratory epithelium of the air sac that consists of vascular area in the form of eyelids bearing many rosettes or papillae the thin epithelium having network of capillaries that covers the eyelids in case of the periophthalmus a small cephalopharyngeal diverticulum lined with vascular epithelium that is present on each side of the roof of the pharynx oral papillae that is found in the electrophorus the gills are degenerate 
that to compensate the mucous membrane of the mouth is raised into oral papillae. These are the oral papillae and they're well vascularized and they help in aerial respiration. Alimentary canal also serves as a respiratory organ. In case of the Lepidocephalitis gantia and Misgarnas fossilis, the epithelial lining of the certain parts of the alimentary canal, especially the posterior intestine that is modified to serve as a respiratory organ. The inhaled air is swallowed and forced back into the alimentary canal and that is stored sometimes in the special part of it. After gases exchange, the gas is voided through the anus. The walls of the gut of this area become thin due to a reduction of the muscular layer and presence of large number of the blood capillaries that is serves for the gases exchange. The swim bladder of notopterus, that is a white pneumatic duct and act as accessory respiratory organ. The network of the blood capillary is covered by a single layer of epithelium. Uh, which facilitates diffusion of the gases between the blood and the air contained in the swim bladder. In deep noise, the air bladder is mostly uh, highly evolved, acting as a lung, and it is vascular and contains many alveoli like structure. In amia, lepiosteus, single air bladder present, which opens dorsal into the pharynx, whereas in case of lepidosiren, protopteras, the air bladder is below ventrally and opens ventral to the pharynx. In some cases, the pelvic fins also serve as a respiratory organ. In American lungfish, uh, Lepidosiren, during breeding season, the pelvic fins of the male fish enlarge in size, become highly vascular, and form filamentous outgrowth. This fin serves as an accessory respiratory organ, and that supply oxygen to gases, uh, oxygen to the eggs that are guarded by them. And upper polar chamber, in case of the Simbrancus, Marmorata and periophthalmus, the inhaled air is passed through the gill slits, is passed through the gill slits into the opercular chamber where it is stored for the sometimes. The membrane lining the opercular chamber that becomes thin and highly vascular to allow exchange of respiratory gases. Now, opercular lung also serves as a respiratory organ that is also known as a branchial diverticula. In Anabastes studinius, Tychogaster, Heteroponistis fossilis, Clarius bactacus, sac like diverticular developed from the dorsal surface of the operculum. This air chamber or opercular lung lie above the gill and may contain specialized structure that called arboration organ or dendriform organ or rosity, which increase the respiratory surface. First one. In case of the anabaster studinius and trichogaster fasciatus, labyrinthin organ present. Uh, in anabaster studinius, the air breathing organ uh, consists of a spacious air chamber on either side of the skull that lie between the first gill arch and higher mandibular arch. The labyrinthin organ that develops from the epibranchial segment of the first gill arch and that consists of three concentrically arranged bony plates. The first plate fused with the epithelium lining the air chamber while the second and third plate are much folded and highly complex, covered with vascular epithelium. It serves to increase the area for the absorption of the oxygen. Now, in case of the trichogaster fasciators, the accessory respiratory organ consists of a suprabranchial chamber, that is a suprabranchial chamber, uh, labyrinthine organ and the respiratory membrane. The suprabranchial chamber is situated just above the gill on either side like anabastes to denius, then that communicates with the pharynx by means of inhalant aperture and with the exterior through the upper polar chamber by means of excellent aperture. The labyrinthine organ develops from the epibranchial of the first gill arch and is simpler in structure in comparison to anabas. It is uh, in the form of a spiral organ, possessing two lip-like expansion and is composed of loose connective tissue covered by a vascular epithelium. The respiratory membrane lining the air chamber and covering the labyrinthine organ that consists of a vascular and non-vascular areas of which the former possesses a large number of the islets that containing parallel blood capillaries. The islets are believed to be derived from the secondary lamellae of the typical gill filament. Now, in case of the heteroponistis uh, fossilis, the respiratory organ that is known as a pneumatic sac or the air sac, and gill plate, you see here, that is a gill plate and the respiratory membrane. A pair of simple sac-like structure extend posteriorly from the supraventral chamber up to the middle of the caudal region. The air sacs are thin wall, long tubular structure, 
which is highly vascular and embedded between the myotomes of the body. The air sacs receive blood from the fourth apparent branchial vessels. The respiratory membrane lining the air sac is thrown into folds and ridges and is composed of vascular area that known as respiratory eyelids that are the actual sites for gaseous exchange. In case of the Clarius batracus, that consists of the suprabranchial chamber. This is a suprabranchial chamber, arteries, fan, air fan, and the respiratory membrane. The suprabranchial chamber lies just above the gill and divided into two cup like compartments and lined by highly vascular respiratory membrane. Two beautiful rosettes that are the air trees on each side of, of the uh, head that are supported by second and fourth branchial arches. The primary gill lamellae of each gill arch are fused to form gill fan and gill plate that consist of the vas vascular area and that also subs for gases exchange. In some pieces, the external gills are also highly vascular and filamentous that are the outgrowths of the ectoderm and that covering the outer surface of the visceral arches. They are in the direct contact with water and they also subs for gases exchange too. In respiration, the embryos of the certain elastobranch causes this long filamentous structure protruding from their spiracle. So, uh, during the development, the keep gill arch does not develop gill lamellae, and its embryonic gill forms rudimentary of the gill arch and aggregates to form a structure that is known as gill marsh. The air breathing organs or accessory respiratory organs develop from gill marsh. In some species, the gill arches, other than the fifth arch, also take part in the formation of the accessory respiratory organ. The gill lamellae, which normally develop on gill arches for aquatic respiration, becomes modified to form the respiratory epithelium of the suprabranchial chamber, dendritic organs, and the air sacs for air respiration. The accessory respiratory organs of heteroponistis and Clarius bactericus that are the modification of the gill. And in this species, swim bladder is either absent or greatly reduced. During tertiary and quaternary period of the Sinozoic era, the oxygen level of the atmosphere and the water was reduced due to depletion of oxygen in rivers and swamps. The gills were unable to cope the requirements of the body. Hence, several teleostean species developed accessory respiratory organs to absorb oxygen from air. Most of the species possessing air breathing organs or accessory respiratory organs are capable of living in highly deoxygenated water of the swampy and muddy ponds infested with weeds. They have been observed to gulp in air from the surface and to pass it to the accessory respiratory organ. If prevented from reaching the surface, these species die due to deprived of oxygen and accessory respiratory organs are capable of maintaining life of the fish in oxygen efficient water. Absorption of oxygen in the accessory respiratory organ is much greater than the excretion of the carbon dioxide. Hence, most of the carbon dioxide is excreted in the gills and the chief function of the accessory respiratory organs is the absorption of the oxygen requirement uh, was needed for the sustaining the life. These are the reference books and introduction to fishes, SS Khanna, Fish Biology, CBL Srivastava, Fish and Fisheries, Pandey and Sukla, Analysis of the Vertebrate Structure, Milton Hildebrand, Vertebrate's Comparative Anatomy, Functional and Evolution, Cardon. Maximum illustrations are collected from Google Image. Thank you, everybody.